we looked last time at trans where we transferred or reflected an impedance from one side of a transformer to the other. Yeah? And being able to analyze for transformers, that's a useful concept because we're going to develop a model of a real transformer so we can represent the losses in it and we need to be able to use this skill to be able to analyze those transformers and find out what the, the, the relevant values are. Okay? The idea is that we have our ideal transformer and what we do is we use transfer and impedances to get all the secondary impedances transferred across transfer Z's we can transfer a current and a voltage using the methods we looked at using the transformer ratio which is always equal to N1 over N2 so use I, I to represent the transformer ratio so this method is I think we're looking at this diagram and we'll have a go at one in a minute with some values one shift Z2 to primary we can do that by saying Z2 dash that means Z2 transferred to the primary is equal to A squared times Z2 We will do the same for Z3 and Z4. So I'm going to write that in red. Do same for Z3 and Z4 to find Z3 dash. Z4 dash. We'll draw them on a diagram in a minute so you can see how they go. Yeah. Also, what we can do to, if we need to, is we can transfer or shift E2 to primary. where E2 dash E2 transferred to the primary side is equal to A transformer ratio times E2 bearing in mind that eventually we want to transfer a value for that back we can rearrange that formula to do so. That's all base. The key to this is that transformer ratio A. Yeah? We can do the same for any other voltages that we might want to transfer. Okay, but E2 here would be the key one. Thirdly, if we need to, we can transfer the currents. So, or shift. I what the what have I call I two to primary to do that I two dash I two reflected to the primary side equal to I two on its own side divided by A. 
And the fact that that's opposite to voltage is because the remember in the transformer equation, the currents are always the other one. The current I1 and I2 are opposite way up N2 and N1 and N2 in the, in the transformer ratios. And that comes from the fact that if we have a step up transformer, if voltage goes up, current goes down, and vice versa. Yeah? Does that ring true with that voltage? If we have a step up transformer, i.e., um, sorry, if a, a step down transformer where the number of turns on the primary and one is bigger than on the secondary, I is going to be a number greater than one. And so when we transfer that secondary voltage to the primary, that's going to be a bigger voltage. If I is five, that's going to be five times bigger on the primary than it is on the secondary. Vice versa, if we're doing a step-up transformer where there's more turns on the secondary, I will be a number less than one, and when we transfer the voltage across, that will get smaller. Yeah. Converse is true of the current. All right? And any impedances we need to transfer, we multiply by the square of the transformer ratio. All right? So what we've effectively done here is turn this circuit. If I just take here, what we've effectively done here is here is our ideal transformer. Where we've moved everything over to the secondary side. The transformer we start with was... See, I've got a different diagram to you. I don't know why. Yeah. Page 14. Yeah. So what we've effectively done is that resistor's there, but our Z3 dash has got a new value. Yep. The current in there would be I4 dash. We'd have Z4 here, but a Z4 dash, because we transferred it. This line would be straight out to the We'd have Z2 dash in there, and this current would be I2 dash. Then we'd have our normal primary components, Z1, with the current I1, no dash on them. There's our former terminals and our source. So if the, the um, transformer with its rate of play is redundant in terms of analysis because as a yeah. yeah? So now we can define analysis work. Okay to maybe find the voltage across Z4 dash. And then we can say, do the reverse of transfer and turn that voltage back to the other side and find out what it is on its secondary side. All right? Because what you'll have to remember, when you, when you get components like speed, to the components representing the losses in your real transformer, you can't, you can't get to these two terminals that are the two output terminals of the ideal transformer with your meter. The only thing you can measure with your meter is there. Yeah. But by this analysis, we can find out that voltage, find out the current through this 
through this to here and the bolt drop across there and find out what's being lost as we go through a real transformer. More about that later. Yeah? So that transfer allows us a method of analyzing because we get everything on one side and then that becomes a simple parallel um, resistor or impedance network for us to analyze. Yep. But they might be inductors and resi resistors eventually, which is a little bit more complex and requires complex arithmetic. But the method is still the same. Okay? Yep. So, if we look at how the method works, okay? Um, Let's have uh, two uh, ten ohms, five ohms. Hundred ohms. What voltage should we have? Five hundred volts. If I have a name to find EL there. An I2 there. I, we'll just call it that, that I load as well. I L. Okay. N1 over N2 is 5. A is equal to 5. So we're going to step down by a factor of 5. Yep. First thing you need to do is move across. So we want to we want to move from one by one across to the other side. Yep. So if we move the ten ohm first. Better give these some numbers, don't we? Z1, Z2, Z3, and ZL. Shift Z1 to primary, so Z. So Z2 dash is equal to A squared times Z2 plus 5 squared plus equals. Two hundred and fifty ohms. All right, and as if by magic, Z2 dash, 250 ohms. All right, I had all, why didn't I? Two, let's just stop the video. Let's go back because I didn't have the video on. Equal square times three, five square times 
of 125 ohms. Put on the diagram the 250 in there. Z1 was, remind me, 2 ohms. And ZL, 100 ohms. Yeah? Last thing to do. Dash is equal to squared a hundred equals L dash two thousand five hundred. Yep. Remember the aim is to find the Which on this side would be called IL, and we want L, which on this side would be EL. Um, too many.
what you've done. So, how have you tackled this problem? Yeah. Yeah, so we go, first of all, if we do ZR dash, that's equal to, first thing is to determine, determine what I is. I is equal to 1 over 50 is 0 0.02. We need that, don't we? And then ZR dash is equal to I times ZR. I squared. I squared. Nearly done it, Matt. Yeah, <laughs> very easy. Okay, which is 40,000 times 0 0.02 squared. I believe that's 16 ohms angle, 0 degrees for completeness. Same thing. Just put I. If Matt had done one of them, one, one of them he'd got square, and the other one <laughs> he hadn't. All right. Impedances have got a square on the A. Somehow you've got to try and remember that, James. All right. ZC dash is A squared ZC. That's 30,000 times 0 0.02 squared equals 12 ohms angle minus 90 degrees. Yep. We're going to need to add these up. So this is 16 plus 0 J. That's going to be 0 minus 12J. Yeah. And last of all, ZL is equal to 5 ohms angle 90 degrees, which is 5 at uh, naught plus 5J. So what did you do from there? So that's moved everything across, isn't it? Yep. So if we did a little diagram, no, we've got our source here. We've got ZL there, ZC there, ZR dash, sorry, ZC dash, ZL, all in series, like so. So that's our circuit. That is useful to just draw that out like that, so you know where you are, and that you've transferred everything. So, next bit is, yeah, so we go ZT, is equal to ZL plus ZC dash plus ZR dash. And that's, so that's adding up all these um, rectangular values. My preference is to write them one on top of the other. Um, so that's 0 plus 5J added to uh, 0 minus 12J added to 60, uh, 16 plus 0J. Add two columns up. 16, 5 minus 12 is minus 7J. Ohms. And then 
we probably need to convert that back because mainly we're going to be using Ohm's law. So we've got it in polar form, a rectangular form. Zt is equal to that. And Zt is also equal to, I got 17.5 Ohm's angle um, 23, minus 23.6 degrees. Yep. Haven't found... Looking at the diagram, now we know that the resistance is apparent that I1 is also I2 dash. Yep, that's the same current because this time we've only got a series circuit. Yeah. So we find that one current flowing in the primary, we can transfer that straight back to secondary, have the secondary current if we wanted to. All right, I don't think that's one of the things we're looking for. No, we're looking for the two voltages. If we want the current, that's, that's straight there. All right? But we need to find that current if we're going to find the volt drops, don't we? So that's the next bit. I1 is equal to EG over ZT. EG was 80 volts, wasn't it? Angle 0 degrees divided by 17.5 angle minus 23.6 degrees. That came out for me at 4.57 amps. Angle plus 23.6 degrees. Yep. What will that allow us to find? Volt drops across any of the components we want to, won't it? Yeah. So we're looking to find, we want to know ER on the secondary, so we can find ER dash. Now, despite your mistake, is this the method you followed, James? So that was that one tiny little error that caused the problem, yeah? I2 dash times ZR dash. That's 4.57 angle 23.6 times ZR dash, which is 16 angle nothing. What did that come out to, Christian? Yep. Don't think we need it in rectangular form for anything, do we? No. And DC dash is equal to I2 dash times ZC dash. That is 4.57 angle 23.6 times. Zero. No, hang on. We're in polar form here. But twelve, wasn't it? Yeah. Angle minus ninety degrees. That came out at fifty-four point 
54.8 ER and EC yeah 54.8 I don't know why but I found the EL here as well which that weren't asked for but 54.8 Volts? Is that what is that what you got, Chris? Jim? Oh, okay. Well, we're going to do. We can do that as well, anyway. Yeah, yeah. So angle twenty-three point six plus minus ninety minus sixty-six point four. We've found the current as well anyway, haven't we? Yeah. So now we can transfer all of these back. So let's transfer the current. I2 is equal to I2 dash times A. I2 dash was 4.57 amps. Angle 23.6. Multiplied by 0 0.02. I got 91.4 milliamps. And the angle won't change. Agreed? Or not? Say I had it on this one, which was different for I on the primary. Yeah. Oh, I on the primary. Okay. But you got the right. So that's I on the primary. Yeah. 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 Sorry, I did. We. I apologise for the cross purposes, but don't make that much. Yeah. Um, er is equal to er dash over a. So that's uh, 73.1, angle 23.6, over 0 0.02, which is 3655, angle 23.6 degrees. be somewhere close to 50 times 80. Well, although we got two voltages in series, haven't we? So, and then uh, EC dash, or EC is equal to EC dash over A. That's 54.8 volts, angle, minus 66.4, all over 0 0.02, and I got that as 2920 volts, angle, minus 66. Point four degrees. Yep. And if you look at the other thing to note is we've got a resistive load, EL, uh, resistive voltage, 
EL, and we've got a capacitive voltage EC, and the angle between them is 90 degrees, more or less, and that's right, isn't it? Yeah? Neither of them are a zero because of other issues elsewhere in the circuit, but there's still that 90 degrees between the capacitor and the resistance. Yeah? Worth noting. That's all, you know, these little things are indications as to that that's what you would expect to get. Yeah? And the current is the current and the voltage across the resistor in phase with each other. 23.6 degrees. 23.6 degrees. Again, an indication that that's correct because with current and voltage for a resistor, current across the resistor and current through should be in phase with each other. All right?